Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. Earthquakes rattle the valley. Fentanyl use doubles in five years. A major retirement in the public school system. And you're going to get a lift from our Uber story this week. Thanks for watching. We're committed to providing local news and news that impacts our local audience from Harrison to Garrison, Greendale to Hope, and everywhere in between, including Agassiz, Rosedale, Squiala First Nation, Fairfield Island, Ryder Lake, Cheacton First Nation, Yarrow, and downtown Chilliwack. A very special guest this week are Chris Clute in a brand new Chill TV series, Counselor's Corner, Chilliwack City. Also want to introduce you, the gentleman to my left here, and that's your guest anchor this week, Steve Croner. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started. Ride sharing is slowly becoming a reality in BC, and last week the two biggest players, Uber and Lyft, were given the green light from the Passenger Transportation Safety Board, but there is a hitch. Uber and Lyft will only drop off in the Fraser Valley for the time being. Both Abbotsford and Chilliwack councils are working with other jurisdictions to create a one-size-fits-all business license model so that any rideshare company doesn't have to go door-to-door -to, -door to get local approval to operate. Two earthquakes in less than two days. Late Thursday evening and again Saturday morning, a couple of minor shakers rattled dishes and nerves in Agassiz and Harrison. 1.6 and 2.6 magnitude respectively. This was on the heels of a couple of four plus quakes off Vancouver Island. Some on social media wondered aloud if this was the result of work at a local gravel pit. Scientists say those blasts did not cause the quakes. Fentanyl use by people who use drugs in BC has doubled since 2015. Two thirds of those people are aware they've taken it. This comes from news research from the BC Center for Disease Control. And Dr. Jane Buxton said, this research shows the majority of people who use fentanyl know they're doing so. Chill TV spoke with one known local addict in Chilliwack named R. The 38-year-old woman openly admitted she's addicted to fentanyl, knows full well that it can be dangerous, and claims she only buys from dealers she can trust. She sent in her letter of retirement in December 2019, but it came to light this past week at the Fraser Cascade School Board meeting. Longtime superintendent of schools for Fraser Cascade, Dr. Karen Nelson, is retiring this August. She jokingly told Chill TV that while she loved working with the media, and in particular FVN and Chill TV, she won't miss the 5 a.m. early morning phone calls to all media when it came to snow day cancellations. Karen also jokes that she can spend more time with her hubby, something she really couldn't do in recent years due to the demands from her job. RCMP introduced at UFVRD underscore RCMP as its new Twitter handle. This is to encompass all detachments within the upper Fraser Valley Regional District. While folks already following Chilliwack Mounties on Twitter will have noticed the change to the handle, police are inviting everyone from Chilliwack to Agassiz, Hope and Boston Bar and surrounding regions to join the new Twitter handle. And when we return, Cold Case as Art. Hello, I'm Jack Hardux from Pristine Foods. We're a local micro farm in Chilliwack. My brother and I are supplying locally grown fresh living lettuce to Hofsteads. We grow them from start to finish right here in Chilliwack. Uh, so there's not very many food miles involved with bringing our product to the market. Hofsteads has been very accommodating ever since we first approached them. They've really wanted to work with us and bring the best quality uh, local product to the customer. And the end goal is obviously to supply a fresh, consistent local product that is very competitive um, with California or imported products. Here's some of the local lettuce we got. Do you want to have a try at it? Local is better. And while their social media was going through changes, so was the way they handle long-standing cold cases. In September 1972, Chilliwack RCMP received a report that the body of a man had been located on a sandbar in the Fraser River near McSween Road. After completing a thorough investigation, officers did not find evidence to support an act of criminality or the identity of the recovered remains. The case went cold. Then, in January of this year, during a unique partnership between the RCMP and New York Academy of Art, the faces of 15 Canadian unidentified human remains were reconstructed by students as part of a forensic sculpture workshop, which included 
the man located in Chilliwack. Now, Mounties are asking if this reconstruction can shed some light to this cold case. There are throwback Thursdays, and then there's the throwback to 1895. One of the Kent 125 celebrations was council having their regular Monday meeting dressed in 1895 attire. Council dressed in period costumes for a portion of the meeting to reenact decisions made during the first year of Kent's incorporation. The reenactment took place during the delegation portion of the regular council agenda. It's the thorny issue that won't go away with regards to who can live on ALR land and in what kind of home. The province is proposing more residential flexibility for people living in the agricultural land reserve as outlined in a new policy intentions paper released January 27th by the Ministry of Agriculture. People are asked to provide their feedback by April 17th on the residential options via email why the ministry finalizes its policy direction, the grandfathering period for the manufactured homes in the ALR for immediate family members has been extended to December 31st, 2020. This means people wishing to place manufactured homes on their ALR property will be required to get the necessary permits and authorizations from their local governments, but do not have to apply to the ALC for approval. By now, it's common knowledge from anyone who has bruised knuckles from salvaging parts at Pick-Apart in Chilliwack knows that the Industrial Way location is fading off to a memory. Well, not quite. Michael Thibodeau started a Facebook petition to see if the infamous pink car that was on top of the company office could be placed in a Chilliwack roundabout. That petition can be found at change.org. Of course, council would have to approve of such an art piece, but hey, if metal flowers and old farm equipment can make it, there is a chance. Thibodeau and Cody Chance said on the Facebook pages that it's not sold. John, the owner, laughed when we told him about the petition and said nobody would want it. It would just need a new paint job. Did you know that in the early days of Rotary Clubs, their mission statement was to fundraise and eradicate polio? That philosophy continues with a novel made in Chilliwack concept, Pints for Polio. It's this Saturday, February 1st from 5 to 9 p.m. at the Molson Coors Brewery on Elder Avenue. Every dollar you spend at the event will go directly to fighting polio. And then, every dollar raised will be tripled by the Bill and Melinda Gates, Gates Foundation. Tickets are just $25 and include your choice of a beverage and a slice of pizza. Jim's Pizzeria, Molson Coors, Rotary and The Drive are the corporate sponsors. And now sports with Steve Croner. Tommy Lyons scored twice, including the game winner. And Connor Milbourne scored his first career BCHL goal and added an assist as the Chilliwack Chiefs outlasted the Prince George Spruce Kings 6-5 Saturday night at the Chilliwack Coliseum. The annual First Responders Night featured the Matthew Hutchinson Memorial Awards that were handed out before the game before a crowd of over 2,500, which included many former Chilliwack Chiefs who, who currently serve in some capacity as a first responder. The next Chiefs game is Friday night in Surrey. The Abbotsford Soccer Association announced a new tournament program starting this April. It's a summer tournament team program for ages 12 to 18, commencing in April and running through to mid-July. Teams in the program will participate in the United Summer Soccer League USSL Tournament Series. Still, with minor soccer, the 2020 spring season is not far off and minor soccer registration for the District of Kent is on now. All matches are at Centennial Park Soccer Pitch with the entry fee at $45. Matches are every Saturday from April 25th to June 20th, and that includes t-shirts and team photos. Info can be found at the District of Kent Community Recreation Cultural Center Facebook page. And some tragic international news. By now, you've all heard about the tragic news about the iconic former LA Laker, Kobe Bryant. <clears throat> we just wanted to acknowledge his sudden passing and of course his daughter and all that were on the helicopter that crashed. We are sending our thoughts and prayers to all the families affected by this tragedy.
Hi, everybody. I'd like to welcome Councillor Chris Clute, uh, who I've never met uh, before today, uh, serving Chilliwack and City Hall since November 2014 uh, in the inaugural edition of Councillor's Corner, Chilliwack City. This Chill TV segment is brought to the community to help educate residents on how City Council represents the various interests in various areas. Uh, I understand, Chris, your direct responsibilities include being chair of the Design Review Advisory Committee and also the Agricultural and Rural Advisory Committees. Perhaps we can ask you to describe the responsibilities of each committee and what important work those committees are involved with. Certainly, and it's good to be here. Thanks for having me here today. Um, yes, yeah, so each uh, councillor has their portfolios, their committees that they, uh, that, that they chair. Um, I have the um, privilege of doing the design review and the agricultural and rural advisory. The design review is made up of 12 members out of our community, um, industry reps, um, the RCMP, um, committee, uh, community members, and we look at designs that come forth to the city that are uh, multifamily, institutional, commercial. Um, we want to make sure that we have a pleasing design. Um, we have a design that meets um, pedestrian connectivity, cyclists. Um, so this is for all new uh, city projects? Correct. So like the, what, what's going on downtown, the downtown redevelopment yeah. right now yeah. would, would, would go through your committee? Absolutely. So that all came through our committee and then what the committee does is make a recommendation to council. Sometimes there's extra conditions that are added to, um, to the proposal uh, that the committee has identified and then it'll go through to city council for their approval. So, wow, that's great. Yeah, uh, and it's been around longer than I've been around, um, but certainly it... Uh, well, and if you've, got, if you've got people like maybe that are even watching like uh, that might be involved interested in being involved how does one get involved or might uh, like do you do you appoint these people or how, how are they put forward yeah correct so we do a call out um, through the city social media through the newspaper every two years we um, put the call out for the different committees for people to apply mm -hmm. um, generally there is it's a lot of people who applies and then we myself as a chair and the vice chair and in this case for the design review it's uh, councillor mercer uh, we go through the applications and uh, we have the difficult task of choosing we like them all but we mm -hmm. have to choose um, however many spots are available okay well so. interesting and i know that um, in december the design review committee uh, passed a resolution to study ev charging stations that right um, for the new zoning bylaw can you tell us how this uh, sort of affects residents um, and what the city's hope for outcome is Certainly. So uh, we know there's a demand. Um, we want to be a sustainable city. Um, this is something that has been asked for. So we're, uh, we're putting the call out out there in our zoning bylaw as well. Uh, we're doing the zoning uh, bylaw review as we speak um, to sh see what we can do to help um, plan for the future. And uh, we've seen developers in our community, um, such as the Five Corner site, that are providing and I forget the number, but I thought it was like six charging stations in that wow. development. So, um, you know, as, as changes evolve and as needs arise, uh, we want to be in front of that and make sure that we are as sustainable as we can be. Yeah, well, that's great. Um, and you're also here to give us some updates on city happenings. Uh, I understand uh, new housing need study is uh, being done right now. Well, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, certainly. So the provincial government is mandating that all local governments and regional districts um, by April 2022, I believe it is, have a housing study in place uh, to identify the needs within the community. Um, we're getting ahead of that a little bit, but we're uh, engaging the, com um, the community. Uh, we want to hear from residents and we can, people can go over to chillwalk.com backslash I believe it's housing study, um, provide us what they think we might be missing. We've done a lot of things over the, the well, last five years. There's the, I, I saw, I think, on social media, there, there was, uh, you were involved in, in a big photo uh, on a new modular housing project. Correct. So the supportive housing units that uh, we're fortunate in Chilliwack that we have um, a really good working relationship with mayor and council with the uh, provincial government. Um, and we have seen in the last couple of years, the Trithui site just recently opened and the uh, Traders Inn site across from the library on First Avenue opened, uh, I guess it's probably a few months ago now, but um, 92 beds uh, for people who are at risk, uh, who need a roof above their head. And uh, we're certainly uh, doing our part to make sure that uh, our residents all have a roof above their heads. And no. It's it's challenging. Every community deals with uh, Well, with it's, this, it's something that comes up all the time when we have yeah. uh, guests from the city. Um, that, that's a, that's a, a perennial thing that comes up. So it's, uh, you guys are doing good work, yep. uh, okay. but, it's, but it is challenging. And uh, my understanding is it's really not uh, a city-specific um, issue. It's, it's really uh, the, the provincial government, is that right? Absolutely. So it is the uh, responsibility of the provincial government. Uh, again, it, key partnerships are, are, are 
uh, key to the, all of this. Um, and we, like I said, we, we do have a really good relationship. Our mayor has a great relationship with the Minister of Housing. Uh, we have been fortunate to um, have had good news over the, this term. So in the last couple of years, um, or year and a half, uh, with these housing projects, the portal, uh, people remember the public hearing, they did ask for a three-year extension. Uh, they were granted an 18-month extension as we look to um, find a more permanent solution um, to, to that need. And uh, I think the uh, mayor's, um, he's, he's having some good conversations as we speak, and I'm looking forward to some good news coming out of that soon. Well, that's good. And um, speaking of mayor, uh, your worship, your mayor right no. now, is that right? Well, I'm, I'm acting mayor. So acting uh, mayor. When Mayor Popoff is not available, um, yeah, then I kind of fill in the gap. So. so you get your own private parking spot now and, and uh, all of that like for a little that. while? No, the living the, no, probably, living the dream? probably have to pay for parking now or something. No. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's, that's really cool, though. And you've done it before? Uh, yeah, every, so every, uh, every year, um, the six councillors each have a, a two-month period where mm -hmm. they basically shadow the mayor. So if he's not available um, to, to go to Contingency an planning. That's great. Well, you know, you never know, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes um, people have, um, in, in our case, we're fortunate we haven't had it, but sometimes there's been health issues or people go on vacation or uh, there's two people requesting the mayor to be at, at an event at the same time. So there's always a, a backup plan. Mm -hmm. so, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, you can find a lot of more information than we, we talked about today um, at the Chilliwack.com, the city's website under the Mayor and Council link at the bottom of the main page. Chris, I want to thank you for joining us today. No worries, thank you. Pleasure uh, having you on the inaugural edition of Councillor's Corner, Chilliwack City. And until next time, uh, I think next uh, time we actually have Mayor Ken on uh, in sure February. Gets, I'll make sure he gets here. Right on. Thanks again. Awesome. Chill TV weather, plenty of rain as the snow melt continues and highs of 10. Now the weather models are indicating there could be yet another Pineapple Express in the making for next week. Thanks for joining us this week and thanks to our guests. Chris Clute, City Councillor in our inaugural Councillor's Corner, Chilliwack City. And of course, Steve Croner. Now Steve, tell us a bit about yourself first off as a realtor. Are things picking up this time of the year? Yeah, it seems to be uh, getting going here in early 2020. We'll see if the uh, spring market uh, can hold these uh, nice gains so far. And you had some fun with TEDx. Yes, uh, recently I was uh, on a showcase night uh, for TEDx Chilliwack and I was chosen as one of the winners and will be presenting my eSports versus sports sort of section, uh, Gamer Kid versus uh, Sporty Kid come April 11th and hopefully to deliver a message uh, that is worth spreading. That'll be a ton of fun to watch. Hey, and if you'd like to share the spotlight, even if you've never been on camera before, send us a note to news at chilltv.ca with your CV and if you have it, links to your video. And if there's something in Chilliwack in the Eastern Fraser Valley you feel we should be reporting on, again, send us an email to the same address, news at chilltv.ca. That's the news this week. I'm Don Lane. Thank mm -hmm. you.